far as lift stations, our SOPs do include visual inspection, which is what the gentleman <coughs> that Wednesday morning should have done, and we would have caught it much sooner. Da daily inspection? Not daily. The, the, the maybe every other well, day. It depends on the, it depends on, because they work in shifts, so it's well, mostly well, by shift. Maybe you should update it to be daily. Well, it's by shift, so that would be twice a day. Somebody look at it when they change switch shifts. So you're saying it's twice a day that the SOP yeah. requires it? And so how did it get by four days? Let me just say this on clear. It's not all of our lift stations. It's the larger ones like Reamer. And the Gorto Road, we, those are the ones that are the largest yes. ones. So you're so saying it went eight shifts without anybody so noticing? That it? next morning. It went to that next morning. Without, Four days. Uh, We're still talking after this morning here. Yeah. In the very beginning of your presentation, you made a comment about the two types of events. This kind of event, and then there's this kind of event. And because there was, I can't remember the words you used, I'm mm -hmm. old, so I still have an instant recall, and, and, and perfect recall. But it, because it was this kind of event, it didn't require some kind of human uh, double check or whatever it was. So I'd like you to repeat that again. I missed that part. Yeah. What was the word you used? Um, uh, or lower. Are you talking about the charts, man? Talking about the charts. The two types of events you said were two types of events. I don't recall that. I know I was talking about two different levels. Yeah. That there's a level that we normally get at the treatment plant and what we actually receive, <clears throat> and the difference between those two levels is what we report to people. Yeah. Yeah. Were you talking about uh, routine maintenance on the, on the thing the company? Just initiated without telling us. Yeah, yeah, and he, he had a name for that versus <laughs> uh, this kind of thing. Did they ever report that they were going through the maintenance bill when you were talking about that part? Okay. Yeah, I um, still have a question. <laughs> He's trying to answer this. <laughs> okay. So, yeah, uh, typically when they were allowed to do some maintenance on our site, they were required to inform some of our technicians, our supervisors that they had a technician going out to the site <coughs> and we would get someone to the site and we would inspect the work and make sure that everything was, was going correctly. It was the end of the day and the gentleman wanted to make another adjustment. He knew it was going to take five minutes. So he said, okay, I'm just gonna run in here real quick and do this. And he did not notify the city that he was going into the site. He went into the site, made the adjustment and left. But I think what, what I thought you had said was because it was this type of uh, action that they were performing, that they didn't have to. And, and maybe I misheard. Yeah, it's, well, it was a minor. It was a minor. Right. It was That's a minor. Right. I think that had to do with having an inspector on site. Now, we could have had somebody there. I think it. That's, what it, I That's exactly it. Right. But the, that, that wasn't, being, the point was we would have had an inspector there and if we had known him, he was going to do that, we would have had somebody from our staff there with him, regardless if it was major or minor. But I think because it was minor, the point I was trying to make was that, I think perhaps that's why the gentleman went on in there. That, that is not how the procedure is. And we should have been notified, as the girl said, and then we will send a staff member to meet that person. It was an easy fix for that. Check. Very easy fix for that. Check. Don't allow anybody in without county keys or city keys. Well, either. they've been working on it, so I think and been out there, so I think the guy was comfortable about to make that final adjustment and felt, yeah, I get in there for five minutes, I got him, so, but no, that is, that is not, major or minor, major or minor, we should have, they, they should have known. You should have access without your notification. Right. I got a quick question for you. When you were talking earlier about this bill, you were, everybody's talking about this bill right now, this is not the first time we've had a Jewish in the Mississippi River, I, for one, are tired of buying bottled water and gallons of water for the last two years because I can't brush my teeth with water now, can't cook with it, can't make coffee with it, can't make tea with it. My animals have to drink it, my dogs, my horses. It's not fit for me to drink, but my animals have to drink it. You had said earlier about this pill, but you had mentioned about rain bottle. And it kind of, the way I caught it, the way you said it was, well, we got a lot of rainfall, we're going to get sewer in the river. 
why your uh, sewer uh, plants are not secure in that canal. I think Mr. Davis made that comment, not me, because I can tell you, if, if from the other floor of the meeting, we've shown hydro events that Mr. Davis spoke of, our new equipment has handled that. It, we can't have this with the hurricane, the heavy rains from the hurricanes, the last two we've had this equipment. We have not had a spill like that from the equipment malfunction. So, abs absolutely. Any spills at all? I can't agree with you on that. Uh, because what we've done, we'll take care of that. It's been a big one in December. Take care of that. Now, yeah. last December, absolutely, we had 16 inches of rain. <coughs> and the, the new plant almost, I mean, it maxed the past capacity. It just couldn't hold it on. So it did discharge when we had 16 inches of rain. I've, but, I've got a question for the gentleman here. He's been waiting for a while to answer this question. I'd like to answer this question. Well, let me finish with him and I'll go to him. Thank you. Yes, sir. Keep going. Like I said, I just I was going to try to find out if there's going to be an end result to this, but I might have to take stock of Walmart where I buy my water out. <laughs> I, I understand, I understand, just there. But here's the deal, uh, Mr. Davis kind of alluded to it, and there are the SCADA system that's going to, that, that was, that we were purchased to prevent what happened in, in December. It's ironic that it made it happen because that's what we're trying to do. Since we've had the majority of the SCADA system in, uh, we reduced our inflow and in infiltration by 25% minimal, which means what we're doing now is a combination. It's just not the SCADA system that's going to help us identify how we're going to use that technology. We're now <coughs> identifying how storm water is getting into our sewer pipes, which is all that water goes to the treatment plant. And we're, so we're not trying to treat the sewer. We got all the storm water from the streets, and then that's what causes that problem. So, so we're double dosing on that with the technology and uh, the, the, uh, the finding of inflow and infiltration that we've had in the past as technology to do. Thirdly, what we're doing, uh, just as a safe measure, we're building another two million gallon basin at Wickham Pitchy. Uh, let me make sure we're speaking of. We finally got APD permitting uh, two weeks ago to begin that process. Uh, so hopefully we'll be done with that considerably through that process before the, before the rainy season gets here. So. That's the difference with the war industry. Yes, John. Okay, I'm just going to batch up several so I don't take up a lot of time. The big one is, how do you get a copy of your SOP? And for that matter, why don't you publish it on your website? That's a big one. The second is, where in this SOP does it say, what was the procedure for checking to see if the employees had done their job correctly in checking at the pump station? From what you're saying, I, I haven't heard that there was one. Another question is, in that SOP, where does it say you're supposed to put signs out? Related to that, did you put a sign at Bay Tree Road Bridge, which is the first bridge below the leak site? No, I can tell you that now, Mr. Corbin, because EPD requires it to be accessibility, and that Bay Tree Bridge is not accessible to the public. Should a born tow uh, is highly accessible to the public behind the Salty Snapper, where there's not a bridge, but we know folks are back there on the four wheels and thing, and even a sign back there where, where the two rivers can join, and then at the how about so that's, why, that's why we didn't go in Bay Tree. How about Bland Park, which is halfway in between Bay Tree and Gornto? What I'm going to tell you tonight, we, we, can take this, we can take this up at a later date. I don't want to spend all the time with science because you've been through that before with EPD. We followed every protocol of EPD uh, uh, required us to do. Uh, but I'd be happy to take that up. We're always willing to, to look at other things we can do and expand where we put signs. But Did you put a still, sign? Still to ask your question. We follow the protocol we're supposed to follow. Okay, well, I, then how do we get a copy of that protocol? APD, you're very familiar with them. Go to George EPD. We have to go to EPD to get the protocol for, that the Valdosta City is using. When we, yes, because we have to answer. They're the regulatory agency for the state of Georgia. We have to answer to them. We, we, we have I think to the point is we're, we're citizens here and we want you to do more than just what the state tells you. And we want you to do things yes, for sir. us. You work for us, right? And I'm, and I'm, and we're, like you said, we're so don't people. just go by what the state tells you. Do what you wanted, what we want you to do for as citizens of, of this community, okay? And he's a citizen of this community. He's saying we want the signs where we need to see them. Absolutely. We don't want them just where the regulation says they have to be. I have to disagree with that whatsoever. I followed up with Mr. Porter by saying we will certainly look at expanding that as we do. I mean, as a, with this bill, we followed the protocol. Well, that's what I'm saying. That's all you did. You did not do what we want, what we need. You followed the protocol. I've already 
the Islandization of Sahak. Yeah, yeah, we've, we've seen the right, right, right. speaker. That's exactly what I just said to you, and you, you, you told me right back. Well, that's all I want to do is follow the protocol. I just do what the government tells me to do above them.
Safe levels in Florida, I don't know how to answer Georgia. I believe there's anything above 400 for California, about 400 and 800 for E. coli. And uh, today at 150, the results was 20, 2,700 at 150 today, <coughs> which is uh, about a third of that <coughs> third one that we on the six. So, we're, we're concerned about with this the way the water flow is in the river right now. It's very, as you know, the river's low, you have very little flow going on. Some of our concerns is a lot of this material may either be trapped in some of the, the low lying areas or slews in the, along the river banks. And as we have these rain events, I, had, I live two miles from the river, State River City, Madison County. I had an inch of rain Friday night, and I'm thinking that the city of Austin had something similar to that. So it just seems to me what I'm seeing here, when we have a, a, a rain event right now of an inch or so, you, you start to see more of this release being done, and you start seeing these higher levels. And my fear is that, and, and our DEP and the Florida Department of Health is committed, and they're going to be testing daily until they get, you know, they, they tested eight days with no levels of high bacteria, and then they, the second time they lifted the advisory on the second event. And now it appears we're going to go into another advisory. For those of you that live in Madison, Hamilton, Swanee, you know, prepare this going to be lit, probably issued tonight. And I don't know how many days that advisory will be up until we get those same levels. But then my concern is, and I don't mean to drag this out, is what's behind it. You know, uh, this, this may be a long-term event for us, and, and we're having to tell our folks, don't drink it, don't get in it, don't you know, test your wells, and do all this stuff. And uh, I, I just, I'm trying to show you or we'll point out the, the impact that this has on everybody. And, uh, We've got a lot of it. We've invested a lot, of it. and I'll just pull it out there and clap that we would hopefully and we would expect to see about Austin to assist us in recouping some of the costs we've had to incur to uh, monitor our, and help our citizens. So just put that as an ask, and I'll pull it from there. Our personal costs. People who have to buy water because they can't drink water in the river. <coughs> Compensation for that at all? Anything in plan? I just, I just, I just, I just, I just want to write to a school where we can observe them on the other side of the door for a while. I heard all sorts of things today and last week, earlier today. Could you please explain who the contractors are and what they're doing? Because I think it's important to explain who the contractor was, what exactly happened, how big the hole in the pipe or whatever, where apparently a lot of it's more sewage. <coughs> came out of wherever it came out of. Explain exactly who was there, what happened, and how that nobody knows it. Because I hear this stuff, and I'm sure a lot of people do, but nobody really, well, a lot of people don't really know what happened. Thank you. Yeah, we're, we're engaged with, with a uh, technology <coughs> contractor from, uh, <coughs> late last year, mid last year, to work on our credit system. The name of the company is EMC, and, uh, and they've done a great job of implementing the technology that we've asked them to deploy for us. And uh, I should want to ask the we're in Alabama. And the reason no one knows the mammals, because it's in the woods, it's probably Quarter mile, half mile, half mile off. Uh, if you uh, if you're from that Austin, you probably know where the <coughs> depot and uh, Target is. So if you go behind those stores, it becomes wooded back in that area. So if you go back in there, a few hundred feet, several hundred feet, that's where the manhole is. And the manhole, there's a manhole on one side of the creek. And then there's a manhole on the opposite side of the creek, so that manhole right there. 
uh, before it goes across the creek is where the top came off the manhole, you know, the manhole lid, and that's where it came out. All the stuff just came out of one manhole. That's the one manhole. Man. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, I, I just want to make a statement. I mean, I've been sitting here listening to this. I've been sitting here listening to this. I've been part of it. Uh, and I don't mean to take up the whole time. <coughs> you know, you talk about communication. You're talking about, you know, getting the word out and things going on here. You're going to have to last week. You know, for a time to be there. Now, I know you guys are the main accountant. You know, I'm taking on the team. I feel like you do. You're not taking them hard to clean them up. And you're talking about the manhole in the woods. The first email I got from Mr. Barber, it said just that. It was still in the woods, heavily wooded area, behind target. In that email, there was not one mention of a sugar creek. Any more way, anything, as bad as it would be in the woods. And we get that email at 12 hour before the business one one. So as social media started lighting up with all that, I'm defending the fact that, I mean, yes, it's a bad split, but I don't think it's hit any of the waterways from what I've been told. And that wasn't the case. Um, you know, like that word, I had crap on my face when the meeting came out in the pressure. So from what I'm hearing from you know, you guys and uh, people in the audience tonight is, they just want accountability. You, know, you guys send me out to work on a manhole, you send me out to work on a pole, the closure, I think you have a supervisor there. Somebody needs to be there to answer for these mistakes. And I'm not picking on you guys. I'm not here to you know, show out or anything. I'm just speaking the truth. This is where we are. This is the reality of it. Uh, it's time for something to be done. Accountability. I know you guys invest a lot of money into this thing. I can probably just for you guys, for you guys sitting next to me, I'm going to hear as much as I do. And it's just, it's never been, I think, in one time. I've been 30 years, 32 years in the business, uh, doing the same thing. Uh, pick it up and try to hold accountable what I do for a living. You know, four radio stations, I fought with this since out in the flood and crumbled the crop of infrastructure. Um, at this point today, <laughs> being kept in court all along the way, being one of the people on the release, and being one of the city's official release, my demand, um, I couldn't be more impressed with the effort and I just went through this transition over the last two and a half weeks to Martin Head meetings with every single person. And every single one right now, the personnel will tell you that I asked this question. Can I walk this earth and I walk into that meeting and show these people? that we're doing everything we could possibly do. I would suggest that as we get these new updated meter reading, electronic meter readers, that we don't need people to walk the streets anymore, that I want them to walk the 125 crossings we have over waterways with our sewer system, that I want them to put eyes on it as well. That I didn't want this job if we didn't pass FLOSS and I couldn't commit $40 million to the further improvements on the system because I can't come up with $40 million over the next four years to keep our promise to you guys and the aggressive timeline that we're on and repairs of this. That uh, I can't face them a little bit. I do that with <coughs> um, We get parking trouble a little. We kind of done a little before we got approval because we wanted to start that process and now we officially have an approval and that 10 million gallon catch basin will assure us that uh, Nothing. We're two miles from the river now, and that pitch based on trips, and nothing can that river at the treatment plant on the rock manuals. We continue to rehab on those for, for probably the next decade. You know that. You know how many there are, you know what we're doing. Additional signage is a great idea as well, John. But, um, you want me to hop off the bridge? I'll leave one well, I know, but I want you to, to come back to us all that have decontaminated wells when the event is over. And say that the city of Mount Dawson is going to support the effort to reimburse us for the well decontamination. I own four wells, but these folks all live where I am, and they're all going to have to have wells that need decontaminated. It's not a trivial process. 
Year or two ago, my oh yeah, we have a place in North Kitchener. My last play, we're out in the water. We kayak a lot, Scott, like you do, and enjoy the water. Get the truck. I have a text from a local official, stay out of the river. The spill happened four or five days prior. We just found out that day, and I've been in the river playing my lab and having a good time on the North Kitchener River. How will the notification system change to guarantee that everyone, even those who don't have email and internet access on the river, know about your spills? Because that, to me, is criminal criminal neglect because you're endangering their lives. I mean, because you're in that water, animals are not water, farm animals are not water, and no one knows. I, I don't think I have an answer to that. You ask that anybody on that email list, you can get it by phone, you can get it by um, notification. You get more specific. With, uh, as well, you can get more specific with that. Because if it's anywhere near a waterway, obviously we don't want an egg on anybody's face. We had one person in the campground get a reverse 911 call. We have quite a few people in the campground have no <coughs> So we're trying to take care of ourselves, and we're trying not to be dependent upon any government organization, because we do, you know, with the exception of a few people, um, you know, a lot of the people in Hamilton County, it's a 4K. So the, the folks that can help, I think, are helping <coughs> to do the job of it, but there has to be several ways of getting notified. 